The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here on this 10th of January, Wednesday, and I think I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to go from where we are right now. If you're looking at the Dow, yeah, first of all, if you're looking at the market, here's the E-mini futures. Made a peak E in the Chapman wave at about 9.45. Uh, that was at about 48.07. It's trading right now at 47.93. Went under the 200 period moving average, which was resistance, then became a springboard support at about 9.23 this morning. This is Eastern time. <clears throat> but what I am looking at here is the chance that we've got a single leg A to the upside. I've got it labeled as an E. No, no, what am I doing there? I didn't upgrade that. I should have updated it. It's an A. E slash A, E slash A. And we won't know for a little while uh, what it is. And in the, this is a pattern I call the Eiffel Tower. It goes straight up, straight down. This is like a pyramid pattern right here in the 10-minute chart. This is the Eiffel Tower. You see this dashed line? I put this, I don't even know when I, if I can put it, go back long, far enough. I put it in here um, because I said this is going to turn out to be a really important uh, level, 47, 89, or 88. Uh, I, I don't go back far enough, but it goes back all the way to the beginning of January, the, maybe the 2nd of January, maybe even uh, the end of um, December. And what I had said was that could be resistance for quite a while until it becomes, if it becomes a support level. So far, look at this incredible, this line has just been fantastic resistance. So the next level to look at will be 47.88, which is the 200 period exponential moving average in the 10 minute chart. Let's get out of this. Days young, so I've got a lot to talk about. I wanted to show you something that I consider to be about as important as uh, I look at price and I look at time. In this particular instance, the time is really very important. We made an all time high of 37.790 on the 2nd of January. And very much like the 1st of August, where we saw a turn down, and then there were these big spikes to the upside, but it never took out the 35,679 August 1st high. We're looking at a kind of a, a mini version of this. I say mini because look at the price movement here. It's tiny. And I consider this to be a hint. It's just a hint so far that this is usurping time as distribution takes place, now, how do you measure distribution? Distribution, it's really difficult to see because you really have to look at, at up volume and down volume. You have to look at big block trades. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just using this particular instance right here where if you look at the Dow, if you look at the Dow, just based on the 9-14 period moving average, how it's starting to narrow just a little bit, but only a little bit, and flatten out. That can take a while because what happened when we had the same top back in August the 1st, we got, this is the gray line, big thick gray line is the Dow price as it's moving intraday. But what's really important is it made this kind of M-shaped pattern, kind of a head and shoulders. It's got, you can call it anything you want, but the issue really is that the 9P moving was acting really well until it suddenly slid. And that became August the 1st was the high. And then you had to wait until basically the 16th and the 17th of, Jan of August before the price slipped sharply low. We're seeing a little bit different here because within the context of the price of the Dow itself, you've got this topping formation. You've got the nine period moving average still pretty strong. I call this the technical tool for me of last resort. This is the one that keeps you <clears throat> in trades longer than you would anticipate, or it gives you <clears throat> suggestions that you don't want to go against the grain. Now, we have gone against the grain. We are short the Dow, very uh, small 
short position, one to one short, very tight stop. But the reason being is that this bifurcated market, for instance, when Boeing was, I, I was going to say something else, but I, in this case, I'll just say sharply lower um, over the last three days since that horrible situation with the, the door that was not either fitted properly or assessed properly for pressurization, etc. Um, look at that plummeted, and yet the Dow was holding very, in fact, that very day, the Dow was down 160 points and then closed up over 200 points. So this is a work in progress. Now, let's just go back to this to say, we're looking at time. If I'm using my usual signals, this particular peak right here in the on-balance volume, the first one, right on the high of the 28th of December, well, it's taken that out. Now you've got a divergence between the slightly lower, just slightly lower Dow from its uh, all-time all high in the 37,700s. And here we are, 37,547. We're using time. Remember, as far as I'm concerned, at least, time is as important as price. When you're looking at either cycles or looking at uh, compressions, to, to be able to break to the upside. So those compressions can take time and then suddenly you move to the upside or the downside. But in this particular case, it's a really slow, it looks like a rollover, but we haven't rolled over yet. Why? Because within the Dow, yes, you can have a Boeing, but look at this, you've got a Microsoft, look at that, Microsoft almost at a new all-time high. It's at 380.65, all-time high is at 385, was it? 84.60 or something? There, 384.30. I mean, it's up almost five points today. And look at this. It went from pink, negative in the 9 period moving average, to positive. And the on-balance volume gave a turn down, not at the high. So this is what I'm saying, that you've got to use many tools because if you use just the on-balance volume, you'd be completely lost in this particular instance. You you have to use other tools. But I, we've been long, actually, I should have mentioned, since 338. We had a really nice trading position at the 366 level, took profits. And then Microsoft, and I'm using this because I have to show you why there hasn't just been a tumble in the Dow when there are many indications that some of the some of the um, instruments within the Dow, the components, are starting to weaken quite a bit. There are some that are just beginning to show strength. So this mix is what I'm looking at. And uh, once again, if you're looking at, say, Microsoft, the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m, if the left side low holds very well, it could suddenly become a cup formation and say, Ho ho, watch out, I'm going back to the old high at 384.30. So there are all these patterns. I just want to get off this for a moment. I want to go to the S&P because, as I say, the um, <clears throat> proportionality is really important. That is the balance between the strong and the weak. And in this particular instance, look at this uh, pattern that we were looking at in, in the S&P, which on the 20th of September made a high of 47.93.30. It's taken time. It's making a little bit of a cup formation. But the technicals are, are weakening a little bit. But that 9 period moving average is still acting so well. I'll be back. This, this is an important week. It's an important week because of those weekly charts. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Dallas, up 25. s and up 5. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. 
This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Real quickly, this is that one minute chart. This is going to a leg D, a very quick D. And remember the quick A to B to C to D says, be careful, you can get a bit of a pullback. If you look at Bank of America, you remember I spoke about this? Oh, wrong chart. ESH24, let's get back there. And we're going to go to our first caller in a moment just let me show you something here yes bank of america remember i said it's going to a peak deep with the rectangle this should come back very quickly into the rectangle and that's what it's done in a very small upside move going from a peak a quickly to a d and the, the uh, amplitude is just very minor watch out now we've got something completely different because we've got garo in newport beach california garo I've got a feeling you're going to be talking about CCCC. Is that CCCR? How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. I'm, I'm a happy camper always. <laughs> good. And 300 days a year, I'm a happy, that's, happy, happy. That's, that's uh, wonderful. Regarding, good. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, regarding that uh, 4C uh, or yes. C4, um, uh, today it hit the 834. Uh, the, it's just two two cents shy of the December 14th, which was 836. Correct. Yep. I got out of it at eight dollars and thirty cents. Uh, I had this at uh, six dollars and seventy eight cents. I had tons of it, but today I got out of it at 830. Uh, what, what is your feeling regarding this? You think it will hit the top? Or uh, or it's going to break that, it's going to go higher towards $10, or it's going to roll down. What is your idea? What's your take on so, it? So let me just go through what we were discussing. Folks, we're looking at C4 Therapeutics. I believe that's what it's called. The symbol is CCCC. It's trading at 816 right now, up a dollar eighty-eight. So Garo called a couple of days ago, and I was looking at it, and it hadn't quite taken out the high of... 
the 3rd of January. Oh, let me change my the mouse because this mouse has got a little hiccup in it. So, here we go. Uh, of 3rd of January, which was, if I can just click on right here. Uh oh, there it is. Slowly. There we are. So, the high of the 3rd of January was uh, $6.84. And what I said to Garrow is <clears throat> on this big rectangle pattern that I drew in. There's also a lopsided cup formation, and that said that with the long-legged wick of the candle of the 14th of December, where it went from 495 to 837, if at any point during the within the next two days, if this can hold for, I believe I said 90 minutes, above five dollars. Uh, no, no. What did I say? Six. It was right there, so it'll have to be. Uh, yeah, six dollars and eighty-six cents. I I think that's what we were looking at. I said if we can hold above that, this particular pattern, which I use all the time for my subscribers and for just for trading, etc., would say that there's a really good chance that it should work its way towards the high that was made. In the the rule of thumb is it should get there by, with, by a, at least a leg D, fourth highest peak, if it makes higher highs and higher lows, to just on, just under, or just above the previous high, which is the high of $6.37 that was made on the 15th. Well, I looked at this yesterday, and it was doing fantastically. It went, uh, it, it did exactly what we were talking about, and it went sharply higher, and today it's gone above that level on the left side. Well, no, it hasn't yet broken. So the rule of thumb mm -hmm. being it should climb in this particular pattern with higher highs and high, mostly higher lows, and it should get to the left side high, very close, just under, right on, or just above, and then you've got to be careful. So that rule of thumb is the same rule of thumb today as it was a few days ago, um, and it's in leg C. That says because the buy signal is so strong, it could pull back a little bit. I don't know if it will do today, hit that 837 level. But either way, there's a chance that it could pull back and then go slightly higher. And that's when I'd be a bit careful because the weekly chart will be going to a leg B. Now, the big question is the high that was made in January of 2023 uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, at 941. Can it reach that? That can it reach that level? And I'm going to suggest to you that the answer is it should, but it might need a pullback before that. In other words, in this particular move, if it takes out now, this is once again the rule of thumb. If it takes out the midpoint of the whole rectangle, if it actually closes of the rectangle, if it closes any day below 6:31. Now, that sounds crazy. It's at 816. Why are we talking about 631? Because if, when this moves and it's a biotech, it moves very quickly, both up and down. So so as I'm looking at it now, I think it go it can go a little higher. How and if it's able to get to eight. Oh, I, I'd have to put it at just to be safe. I'd say 856. If it can close above no, I'm going to make it 862. If we can close above 8,062 this week, that portends even higher prices. But am I thinking is it'll pull back a little bit and have one more pop to the upside? That's kind of where you've got to be careful. But that six, I think, what did I say, 630 something, that's going to be absolutely key support in January. I see, I see. So looking out, uh, um, looking out, I think it does have the potential. But the other thing about the stock is it's a biotech. So whatever is happening now, uh, just keep saying to yourself, biotech, biotech, they have a tendency to have big moves. And then before you know it, it's given back a chunk. And then it does it all over again later on when you've given up on it. So at this particular point, it's in this accelerated move. It's got to do it very quickly. But as soon as it starts to pull back, you've got to be careful. Hope that helps you. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> my, my take on the pullback, <clears throat> it's going to be $7. I don't know why. <clears throat> uh, I think that it's going to hit $7, and that is the 
five day simple moving average of, of a daily chart. Um, on a, or um, or is the, uh, the 50 minutes of the uh, 50 minutes of the uh, 50 uh, no, no, the, uh, simple moving average, 50 day simple moving average on, on, on a 30 minute chart. I think oh, it's okay. going to come down to, to $7. Maybe it will build another base there one or two days. And from there, it's going to go, if it goes higher, it's going to go up from there. Uh, I don't know if it's going to do that, but I'm just waiting. I wrote all the numbers that you told me. Uh, you're absolutely right. Biotechs move very, very fast. Today, I shorted LABU. <clears throat> uh, it, it was going up 5 $6 a day higher, but uh, today it's down $5, and I shorted it at, on a 30-minute at $137. So you're absolutely right. Biotechs are very wild, and you have to watch what you're doing. Absolutely. I wrote so all the numbers down. Mr. Bezier, I appreciate it for all the services and so on. I will call you probably uh, on Monday, coming Monday. If there's right. any life left. So, I the said, IBD, thank you so much. Have a nice day. The IB, uh, I'm just going to say thank you very much. And the IBB did make a peak D uh, yesterday. That's the IBB NASDAQ Biotech ETF. So mm, yes, you've got a good move there. Yes, Congratulations. Yes, Dow's up 28. Yes. We'll be right back. Thank you, Garrow. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. 
Hi folks, so I want you to have a look at Bitcoin. I was asked, a number of people have asked me about Bitcoin over the last few days, if you're looking at it. This is a leg E, possibly a peak E in the Bitcoin daily chart. It's a leg E in the weekly chart and only a leg C in the monthly chart. So within that context, I was asked about Ethereum. Ethereum is uh, um, an ETF. Uh, this is the Grayscale Ethereum Trust. Made a peak F in the daily chart at about 20, 20.70s, I think. Let me just check here. <clears throat> 20.98, 20 20.98, trading right now up, at a gap up, 20.98, let me just type that in, 20.98. And um, it's really made an H pattern, and it's had a little bounce, not a, a big bounce today, up $1.52, up 8%. And the weekly chart is an F slash C. I still think this looks very good. I believe that this whole pattern that we're looking at, this art formation, I, I would not be surprised if in January, so what are we, we're only the 10th of January, so within the next seven to nine trading sessions, I wouldn't be surprised if we're in a big consolidation sideways. This could go to a higher high, could start a leg D. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to the 21s. But that, I think, could be the upside resistance. Actually, let me do this. I don't often do it. Let me go to Ethereum and the Chapman Wave automated support and resistance levels. Yeah. So 20.74 on the weekly chart, 20.95 in the daily, and 22.30 way up there. And then 20.64 in the 120. Yeah, that's, I think, 17.87 is the only support level I've, I've got close by. Then it goes to 16.46. I, yeah, let me just do this again. Yes, GBTC, they're all doing the same thing. Uh, GBTC is the Bitcoin ETF. So this is a question. This doji candle from yesterday and a gap down today, um, is this an F or is this a brand new uh, B? There's a doji candle leg. Yeah, that actually confirms for me that there's a really good chance that there's a, an upside bias, and the only way that this will consolidate is to go sideways. So I'm thinking that there's a sideways consolidation. I'll go back to e ETHE. That was a question. Whoops. ETHE, Ethereum. There you are. Ethereum is trading at 20.02. Um, it's up 1.53. As I say, up 8.2%. But if you look at the weekly chart, the nine period exponential moving average is just so strong above the 14. The MACD is good. The stochastic's flat at 89%, turning down a little bit, but still holding well. The unbalanced volumes already had a bit of a pullback. Uh, monthly charts, leg D, a very quick A to B to C, but this long leg of D, this really sharp move up in D, says it doesn't, it's not the same criteria that I was looking for. Just to remind you, let's just go back to the Bank of America chart, and that was at highs. That's different. So this went very quickly, went to peak G, pulls back, and then a very quick peak A, and then slightly higher peak B. Oh, I should mention we are long. Um, uh, we've been long for quite a while in, in Bank of America, and it went to a D, and now it's pulling back three bars, just a mild pullback, the nine still strong over the 14. And I've got it as a peak, as a leg C. If all of this week it doesn't go to a, an extend leg C by going above the 34.69 level. If it if it closes at 34.69, it continues leg C, right? If it's right there. If it's one penny lower, it makes a peak C. So I'm watching this. Let's go back to the pattern that we're looking at, ETHE. <clears throat> yes. So there is in internal strength. I like it very much. My, my bigger target for Ethereum is first of all the midpoint of this really ugly candle was it April? Yeah, April of last year. 2720 was the high, sorry, 2889 was the high and 20.01 was the low. So get to the middle of that and I would say my first target would be 2390. Now let's call it 23s. 
it's at 1996. That's, that's quite a way to go. 23, that's my first quarter of 2024 target. But I think that it might go sideways to choppy. I don't think 17.13 will be broken. That's the 200 period, sorry, that's the 14 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart. But, I, and I, I, should, I should have said in January, not all all year. But in January, I think that's going to hold the whole area of 1720, maybe even to 1690. But at this particular point, it's holding very well. I hope that helps you. Then you had another question. Could I add BRPHF? Oh, you, you do find these symbols, don't you, huh? Keep me working. I can get a tendonitis on the wrist. So this is a little different. This is the Galaxy Digital Holdings Limited. Galaxy Digital. Yeah, so this is different. This has already made a short term top at uh, seven, uh, sorry, at eight. Mm -mm. No, it actually went to 9.3200. So this is like a pink sheet, uh, it trades in those decimals. And now it's trading at 7.54. This is just going sideways, consolidating. It better hold 7, 7, 0 .00. If it breaks under 7, this is going to go down for a little bit longer. <clears throat> um, a, B, C. Yeah, weekly chart. So this is a peak A, B, C, D. And that's an A, B, C. Yeah, weekly chart is still positive, monthly is positive. But um, I'd just be a little careful. It needs very quickly to get to the 8.20s, and it's at 7.54 right now. Uh, so I, was, I, I need to mention, I'm, I'm talking about stuff that's worked for us for subscribers to my opening call. Uh, for instance, UEC, I spoke to uh, Jacob yesterday. He was interviewing me uh, at, in the afternoon show, Tom O'Brien show. And uh, I'd said, this can very much uh, break to the upside. It has already broken to the upside <clears throat> and that's very important uranium energy corporation so i said the high that was made is 680 oh, sorry 7.48 back in november of 2010 that might take a little while to get to but that would be the upside target and it tells me that uranium is actually very much in demand and you can see it here here's the monthly chart of the uranium so i'm talking about this we're in in the 360s and here it is much much higher than that, it's up at the um, uh, 690s, almost $7 area. But uranium core is in a leg C in the daily. <clears throat> a leg C now is a brand new leg C in the weekly chart and a leg C in the monthly. What was I talking about? Someone asked me about something. They were all in Ds. Well, this is all in Cs. So Sprott Uranium Miners ETF just tells me that there's something going on that makes uranium really important in this particular phase. So, um, let me see. Oh, so I, I wanted to mention, so we've got two stocks today that are doing extremely well, Microsoft and um, the UEC. Um, but we have one that I got yesterday, which was at low, close to lows. And I thought we could get it as a starter position to, to move higher. We got stopped out because I did not want to hold it if it started to go below a certain level. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, so look, here's the one minute chart in leg E. And look, here's the with Chapel Wave automated resistance support levels. Look right at the 200 period moving average, the one minute, and there's an automated 4795.95 support. And then what happened is there were two resistance levels. And my impression always with these automated uh, Chapel Wave uh, support and resistance levels is if the price is bumping up against it, it becomes a magnet. But if it goes above it, then all of a sudden it becomes support. So we've just broken to the upside. Got to be careful here. And look at this. You remember I was talking about the um, that mid-channel resistance line that I had drawn in, <clears throat> very narrow rectangle. And I drew this. I said, this is going to become more and more important. That's the 4798 uh, horizontal dash trend line in the 10-minute chart. Look how we went in there. And now that nine period moving average is still positive, and it's great. So the, I wanted a couple of things I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> I'd mentioned this technique of the 914. Look how it can hold all the way. Look, when this flipped positive at about 10 to 11 yesterday, um, it held until it went to a peak D. Remember the Chapel Wave peak D is the objective. Uh, other things can happen at a peak D. You saw it right there, peak D at about uh, 4 o'clock this morning. So um, in this particular instance, we've really gone sideways. It's like a rectangle formation right here, another rectangle formation. And it turns out this is not quite the midpoint of the rectangle because if I go to the high that was made right here, all of a sudden it is kind of the midpoint, not quite the midpoint, but close to the midpoint. Look at that, um, right there. So this is becoming more and more important, and the buying phases within each 15 to 20-minute period today, even yesterday was like that, is quite impressive, okay? So um, at this particular point, the bias is up. Now, what's interesting is uh, I wanted to show you uh, right here. So we are short the SMHs via the three times short SOX, just a small position. And we've traded it. We've had a nice, uh, really nice profits. has gone from the mid fives that we got in. It actually ran all the way to the sevens. Then it pulled back when the NVIDIA screamed to the upside. It was pulling back sharply. But look, the, um, the SMHs, the semiconductor uh, ETF, 
This is the Van Eck Semiconductor ETF. They made an all-time high at 176.75. Remember, we did the measurement, the vertical measurement of price together with the technicals, and was much stronger at 175.86 than it was when it went to the high on the 26th of December of 176.75. And that said to me that this is kind of weak, but within that, the favored sectors, you can tell how this, I mean, now look, Microsoft is up uh, six dollars at 381.88 you the the way the money is just being forced into the magnificent seven i mean look at google look at that uh almost at the, um, the high of three weeks uh, it was it three weeks two weeks ago the high of december the 26th was uh 143.95 and today we went to 144 i have to call this an e right now right in the daily chart e um and this is now a leg c in the weekly chart. I, uh, money just keeps flowing. And look at this. We keep talking about when will the Russell 2000 stocks, the IWM, when will that find favor? Well, even now it's not finding favor. What about IWB? Is, it, is that the, the, the 1000? Oh, yes, the ICS 1000 ETF. Don't tell me I have to do the notation. No, it's a leg D in the monthly chart. 267.13 was the all-time high back. I think, believe it was January of 2022. And there's tiny little doji. How these stocks, just these ETFs and stocks, managed to make these tiny doji candles at recovery highs or all-time highs is amazing. 263.59. So it's underneath. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. 260. Yes, 263.59. Just four points away from an all-time high. So the difference between the 1,000, let's go to ARKK. ARKK, I had a question over there. I hope I didn't miss it. Yes. So um, ARKK, look, no, it down 33 cents at 49.17. So you can't tell me that there's a bias in the market at different times um, in cyclically. And when that bias is in favor of fund managers grabbing what's working, you can't actually fight that because it's just, it's like a reflex action. They say, why, why would I be bothering about such and such when I know that money keeps flowing into this beauty uh, like, a, like a Google or like, a, how's Amazon doing? Amazon up uh, very nicely, uh, up 1.87. At 153.24, underneath that previous high that was made uh, back at 155.43, I think. can't remember offhand. One, yeah, 155.63. 155.63, yet is at 153.24. Weekly chart, I've got this as a B. And that means that this should go to a leg C. So that's what I'm saying, that we did a small short in the Dow. So far, it's it's okay. We uh, we've got the SMHs a short on the SMHs. That's working out well, um, but it is so selective that you've got to you have to say to yourself, "What are your projections for the short and ESM?" Oh, that's adding. Uh, someone's just uh, said that. And let me just see this. So that wasn't a question to me. That was a question in the den. So let me just say this has made a peak E, the one minute chart. Um, the that Eiffel Tower pullback held nicely. In fact, probably it held the Fibonacci number. I like to use a Fibonacci just at certain times, and this is one of those times, right there, to right there. Oh, two two three eight, unbelievable two three, right there, and then it rallied off that level. Um, so now it's in no man's land, or no person's land, because um, it's, it's had a rally. This is still showing some strength, but I need to go to the five-minute chart. Let's go to the five-minute chart right here. <clears throat> so that's your starting point. There goes to peak A, peak B. But then if you take it out, that's negated. That's done. Now you start a brand new one. This is a single leg A, pulls back. That's an A, and that's a gray A. And that's uh, gray B because it hasn't gone, the stochastic hasn't gone to 80% or more. So, so far, the technicals are pretty good, but it hasn't broken out. But I would just say that I see some strength. The way 
the way the buying keeps coming in selectively, I'm really concerned. Um, so let's just go to NVIDIA. NVIDIA is up 13 at 544.88. To say that it's challenging, uh, look at this cup formation breakout here. Um, and if you look at the monthly chart, I love this. I keep these because I do every hand, every chart you ever see of mine is hand notated. This is an automatic. Uh, um, Steve Rose has got a program that he's worked out and he does channel wave notations. Mine is a little different in the sense that I, I, there are inside bars and all sorts of things that I have to count in the full technique. So this is now a legacy going to the channel wave inside track repellent zone in the monthly chart. But you see these letters here? And you see those letters? This is from before a split. This is where it was once there. That means the price was once upon a time at about 544 before it was split, and now it's back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. 
Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, just on a short term basis, watch the 49, 47, 98, 47, 98 ish area. Um, that's that uh, horizontal line. If it goes under that later in the day, then you've got to be real careful. Right now, this is just the wishes of buying. So FXI was a question. No, it was Queb. Queb is the QWEB, is the iShares China uh, Queb. Queb, just let me get this out of the way because it's something I wanted to talk about. Yeah, Queb, just be careful. It's just, you know, these are the China stocks. I, China, it's just not looking very good. Look, it keeps making lower lows. So just be real careful there. Now, I wanted to mention, so um, back in the 1980s when I had my service, um, I used to always talk about, I used to yell and scream about General Motors, um, about the, um, the bean counters and how they start to use plastic parts. It was the most disgusting thing, and that Japan was becoming so superior, and uh, it was just a change. This getting both, getting both, it seems to be the same thing. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you for Check out more people. They newsletter. There's a lot to talk about.